right oh Oh, yeah oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) welcome everybody i'm excited uh this week i'm joined by Gie. he actually did our music which makes it even better yeah and if you're super nice and actually stay through the whole thing he might play us out with it on the guitar (laughs) it is an option it is always an option Um, he's the sound designer and um, I believe now the engagement director over at Chromatic Games. Uh, they do Dungeon Defenders, um, which is super awesome. And then I'm joined by Justin Connors, uh, creative director of 8 Prime Esports. Uh, excited to kind of just talk with you guys today. So this should be fun. Um, it should be. If it's you, not, you have a it. wide range of talents <laughs> and jobs, which makes it really interesting to just kind of like you know, talk about all of those different roles, but Tell how did you get, how did you get Justin. started in the game industry? <laughs> I thought you were talking about Justin. Oh, well, <laughs> both of you, both of you. Uh, well, uh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you for the, uh, for the beautiful words. Um, it's funny. It, it, this is in, in many ways, uh, a dream job, right? Uh, mm-hmm. doing something as cool as video games. I mean, I, I, I remember my days, um, just being a, a youngin and playing Nintendo till the wee hours of the night. And I was like, there's somebody that actually has this job to just do <laughs> this for a living. And it seemed uh, so unattainable. Um, basically, by luck, I would say I, I, I got into the industry. Um, I've always been a firm believer of uh, people first and uh, good relationships and just building bricks along the way and bricks because like you need solid foundation to move forward Mm -hmm. and uh through a good friend that i met here in uh in beautiful sunny gainesville i know it's snowing (laughs) somewhere else uh sorry uh but it's beautiful here and uh a good friend of mine augie lai uh we started a venture in a separate company uh i would say a few companies ago and uh through the years he got the opportunity to uh buy back um uh, the, the studio that he that he created um, about a decade ago. So um, I came along for the ride. Uh, since we had uh, intertwined and, and met each other for a long time, we were very aware of each other's skills and um, and, and and little abilities, the uh, things that we we're good at. He feared it would be a good idea for me to join the team over at Chromatic, uh, back then still trendy entertainment, and. Um, bring some goodness you know that's <laughs> that's what we all do we everybody brings their goodness no that's awesome and i mean i can totally relate to what you mean by uh people first um and just kind of building those long-term relationships yeah totally because i mean i was a student up in gainesville and i mean every time i talk to augie and he tells the story he tells it differently um <laughs> yeah. but i used to show up every once in a while and just check out the game and like play test some random stuff because i uh i was still writing about video games on the side at the time um, while as a student, you know, at law school. And it was just super fun because here's a studio in my own backyard. I'd be right. able to just kind of pop in. I mean, I don't know a student alive who's going to say no to like free pizza <laughs> and games because, again, it's a little bit of sanity in the middle of, you know, reading 300 pages yeah. of constitutional law or something, you know. <laughs> so it was an awesome break. And I mean, I just would get these super crazy overpowered weapons from you guys and just go back and play with my friends and they'd be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, this thing one shots everybody in the level. (laughs) Sucks to be you. (laughs) It was just always a lot of fun. Uh, But I remember I ran back into you guys like almost five or six years later um, at um, Guardian Con. And it was just great getting to chat. And just kind of see where the the game and the studio were now. And that's yeah. just, that's an awesome kind of testament to just kind of like, again, like, uh, you know, genuinely try to get to know people for people and not just, you know, see what they can do for you, you know, because yeah, no, it, it helps a lot. Most definitely. And uh, Guardian Con was uh, a good, uh, I wouldn't say a turning point, but it was a good um, midpoint, if anything, or a reaffirmation of what we wanted to do um, as a mm-hmm. team. Um, uh, Ogi came back to the company, and and I came along with uh, uh, some other fellas um, on December two years ago. And uh, there was definitely a little bit of uh, uh, how are we going to approach this now? Um, because not us, 
uh, personally, but as a studio, right? Uh, the mm -hmm. whole idea was uh, the that the franchise it, it, it was it, it is such an iconic game, and it was uh, more so at that point. And they had gone through some um, and even times with uh dungeon defenders 2 which ran mm -hmm. out it's a super stable game uh endless fun uh definitely infinite grind which is what makes uh dd2 spectacularly amazing mm -hmm. in its own right uh different from from dd1 but it had not started that way mm -hmm. um and so it took a few years for for dd2 to be in 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 the, in the great shape that it is now and so we were now coming after that and uh, the idea was what do we do now um mm -hmm. Do we go? Do we go back to the basics? Do we continue with this? Did the two feel for it? Um, so, and internally, the structure was changing. Right, uh, a, a big management had had left the studio. So there were a lot of thoughts of um, we know what we want, um, and it's just a matter of what does everybody else in the team want. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's very very important sometimes uh, in a situation like this. For example. Uh, where uh, a new company is starting or rebranding, there's a lot of chance that uh, somebody's going to come and say, okay, now we're going to do things this way, blah, 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 or we're going to continue doing something. Um, but when there's significant change, it, it's a good time to reset and let's just get to know each other first. Let's mm -hmm. everybody let's just stop, <laughs> stop writing, put the pens down, um, put the stylus down in this case. And, um, and let's get to know each other and let's see what do we want to do as this new community mm -hmm. um, together, right? And and let's set what's attainable. Let, uh, one of our big points was uh, what does the, even uh, the outer community want? What, what do our fans want, right? Um, so uh, definitely there was some data uh, for us to, to dive into, but, but going to places and listen to people firsthand and, uh, and interacting with people at conventions was something that, uh, it's just natural for us to do, um, and and that really helped up shape uh, the the plan of what was to come. Mm -hmm. uh, you you mentioned the, uh, the 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 two tasks that I mainly juggle at work. Um, audio is the one, um, and uh, engagement is the other one. And when you talk about engagement, there's a few different strands that you can go in different branches. Uh, there's internal engagement, and then there's the uh the fan base engagement mm -hmm. uh which i hate the word fans because i it makes me feel like a rock star which i am not <laughs> i was but no longer <laughs> no um uh I, I think everybody's just like really uh into the franchise so for for me they're all friends right so yeah. what do our friends want on the other side um but also what do our friends inside of the studio want you know because mm -hmm. it's important to to strike a balance um uh i've heard people say oh you know like uh uh, the players don't necessarily know what they want. Um, and that may be true in some instances, but in a franchise like ours, so we, the, it's been mm -hmm. out for 10 years, they very much know what they want. Um, mm -hmm. But that does not mean that we can still give them something a little bit different every now and then mm -hmm. and uh, and increase that horizon of, of uh, content, of playability, of modes, and things that they can, that they can expand upon. Um, so, yeah, Guardian Con was a great point because, first of all, uh, I was not too familiar with Guardian Con. Um, mm -hmm. and when we realized it was pretty much in our backyard in Orlando, we're like, we're definitely going, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so we loaded up the van. Uh, we actually got a van <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, no shaggy carpet though. And that, I think it's a, that's a miss, but anyways, uh, we went there and our main goal was not so much talk about, uh, w the past or what it was. We wanted to see. What was the feel? It was like a feeler gauge of what um, what was in the works uh, for the studio. Uh, we had done some some beta testing and 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 a version of the game um, that it was for uh, a console that we were bringing along. We wanted people to play it out and see if the direction that we were taking with the game was something that uh, still had a place in the market. And uh, the beautiful thing was not so much what we took, uh, but what we got away from it. We met a lot of cool people that we still in touch till this day. Uh, that was the first time that I saw you, John. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, one of those things that they always say this about thieves. You know, it takes one to know one. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that that applies for everything. Um, and in my case, I like people that are uh, that has uh, that that possesses this positive energy, this 
exudes mm. positive energy and, and wants to do things. And, you know, within five minutes, uh, we need, you know, John was one of the pack. So um, uh, we've, we've kept, we've kept in touch through the mm -hmm. years and it's just, it's been fun. No, and I mean, uh, Guardian Con was super interesting to me because you guys were showing off um, Dungeon Defenders Awakened at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, when I picked it up, I was just like, wait a minute, this this is the first level, you know? And it was like, <laughs> yes. I felt like I was home. You know what I mean? Like it was one of those like really warm, comforting feelings, you know? And you talk about how like, there are times where the player base doesn't know everything they want because right. they may not know the right terms or something, you mm -hmm. know? And they may be saying, well, we, we just want more replayability. Well, then maybe you do want some of these things you say you don't want, you know, like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was super, super just comforting to pick that up and play it again. And I'm excited to see where you guys end up taking the franchise now that you've kind of reintroduced it to a lot of people. And we'll continue to reintroduce it to people as it starts to launch on consoles. Yeah, the feel, uh, the nostalgia factor was definitely huge, right? Um uh, one thing that we kept on uh, kept on hearing was people just want a remake of DD One. So God, you make a remake of DD One, you know. And, and uh, even though it seemed like the easiest path to take, it also seemed a little bit of a cheat, right? And, mm -hmm. um, and why redo something that is still on? Like DD One still has a huge following. Uh, everybody plays all the time, and and I, I see in the forums, it's an active community, newly uh, uh, re empowered by a, a special team of, of players. Actually, they got together, and then we allowed them to. Uh, modify the game a little bit and th mm -hmm. that's the, the redox version that came out of dd1 <laughs> and it's a complete blast like it's amazing so people are um rediscovering it um but at, uh, at the same time it never died out mm -hmm. so uh there's there's an increase and through the years we've been seeing uh there's just people that come and play dd1 uh religiously for for the last decade so so yeah that uh that uh deeper well which is that uh, the first map that we brought it was uh, it was reimagined uh, in in a great degree. I love it now. I think a big move uh, that we had was um, the uh, when we did the jump from a real three to a real four that mm -hmm. allowed us to do a lot more um, and uh, to do it somewhat faster, more effectively. Uh, but it also gave us wings to try to. Uh, uh, the content team had a lot of a lot of fun. Um, adding little trinkets here and there. It was just uh, the the style of the animations, the, the style of the graphics. Uh, it's just, uh, it's very peculiar. In in, in my perspective, uh, when I saw that build, it's like, this is made for Nintendo. It's got that feel. It reminded mm -hmm. me of, uh, I don't know if you ever played Mickey Mouse and Super Nintendo. It kind of had that <laughs> nostalgic sort of feel, uh, even though that was 2D, but it, it had that uh, softness around the edges, which yeah. I uh, I thought it was great. It's always had its own like really creative charm to it to me because like uh -huh. you look at someone like the squire and the fact that he's wearing polka dotted underwear right. and like some of the art and stuff. And now it's kind of funny. Yeah. Now <laughs> now he wears crocs. He rocks <laughs> them crocs. <laughs> but I think one of the most like interesting and almost memorable things for me was even just while playing the game, uh, I think you were randomly picking up this like I don't know if it was like a resin or a plastic vase oh, yes. and just kind of dropping it on the ground. And you're like, this makes a really cool sound. There goes a sound And I was just like, that's a sound designer through and through right there. Like they can't turn it off. They're like, I need this. This makes good music noises. Uh, yeah. So what happened was uh, we decided to get uh, a suite big enough that we can have people in and out um, and, mm -hmm. you know, allocate enough time for people to come and go. Uh, but at the same time, to not feel crunched so uh we were able to get that uh a nice roomy seat but we didn't account for all the furniture that it was going to <laughs> be coming with so i wanted to throw it over the balcony but that was not an option so i started moving things around and as i did i moved this huge base and it sort of slipped of my hands because uh it looked like ceramic and mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, i'm gonna be careful with it but it slipped and as it fell and it touched the ground and made this fantastic boom. It was like boom. And I was like, oh my, oh my, I have to have it. So I started uh, banging all over the place because there were different uh, surfaces. There were different types of rugs mm -hmm. in there. And um, finally I found one that I really liked. And uh, I think that's when you came to the room 
Mm-hmm. I'm like a maniac, just like finding the the right <laughs> the right uh, uh, length of boobiness for that to sample. And then we we decided uh, it would be a good idea to just take it home. So we couldn't, um, but uh, we found one online. So we ended up ordering <laughs> it. <laughs> so the Manabong from The Apprentice actually has that rumble comes from that base. I was hoping you found a way to work Guardian it into the Prime. game. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And that's always been something that's super interesting to me is just that entire kind of process of like, where does inspiration come from when it comes to like, I need to make something that's magical or something, yeah. you know, like, especially when you have to do something that's almost otherworldly, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like we all know what like running on gravel should sound like, <laughs> you know, but when you're starting to do something where it's like, okay, what would a mana blast sound like? Or what would, you know, like calling down fire from like <laughs> you know like a wizard or something to, you know yeah so for me there's two things there's two uh that kind of have the same grade of difficulty number one is that what you just described uh i've never seen this in real life right like what does calling a dragon sound like you know and uh or what's the, the sound that he would do that he would recognize yeah so that's one like they that i don't know i've never heard it but the, the one that I actually have the most fun and is equally as challenging is to make familiar sounds that uh, when you... Okay, so perfect example. Same same map, Deeper Well. Uh, one of the first things that I did was uh, go around the map. And I would assume because of uh, limitations in, in a real three performance-wise, not everything had a sound, right? Mm-hmm. Or, uh, or certain things were borrowing sound here and there. Uh, I still do that every now and then, just uh, performance issues. We Our game tends to be very, uh, uh, it just consumes a lot of performance. There's, there's points in time that you have like 83 enemies on the screen. And so there's just a lot of performance mm-hmm. you have to watch for. But I remember um, going through these beautiful waterfalls on the sides. And what I heard was a river, like a soft moving river. So it, it didn't match what was on screen so i was like okay i'm gonna sample rain we're in florida um it <laughs> rains every day uh from 12 to 3 there's gonna be at least 10 minutes of rain um especially during the summer so i was like this is gonna be cake so i went around and i sampled it for days and i could not get the sound right it just um uh, because of the location and where you are the drops like splashing on surface actually are way louder than the, the actual rain so i needed to be on you know on the hundredth floor of of an amazing uh, <laughs> of an amazing building, so that I could just hear the water traveling and never hearing where it stopped or where it touched the mm-hmm. uh, surface. Um, so I was just going nuts. I couldn't get the right sound. Um, and then one day, I am alone. It's like one in the morning in the in the office, and uh, I was getting really really cold. So I got really close to the AC because I was trying to block it. And as I'm trying to block it, I heard this, like, and I was like, actually, that sounds like a waterfall. So <laughs> I ended up sampling the AC <laughs> blasting and a few, uh, some water running from the faucet. Uh, but it was mainly the AC unit making the best rain sound that the rain could not give me. Um, so trying to re-envision the world with what you see as mm-hmm. opposed to with what you hear, and finding that overlapping um, space is pretty cool to me. Um, that that's uh, challenging in it in itself because you it, it makes you want to go to where your eye thinks is right and that is not right. You know, uh, what's up, bud? Looks like we got Augie uh, oh, yeah, doing Augie. a little bit of a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting ready for a, for a later stream. Um, oh, that's so, awesome. So so that's that to me is really cool. The fact that you can start putting uh, things together and finding finding uh uh the sound that your that your eyes are telling mm-hmm. you should be right somewhere completely different mm-hmm. so that's cool so a question oh, I, that's have, awesome. I have though is that you have you're very interesting because you know if you were to look again through your your past you have a very business side very you know your your, your business stuff's very focused on one thing but you yeah. can obviously tell by you sound and music is also a passion of yours how did because you don't see very often an engagement director and sound designer in the same title. So yeah. how did those merge for you? It's funny. Um, uh, this has always been my go-to. Uh, how how do you make things uh, and actually doing them, like making them come to fruition? Uh, that's very. It's always been 
uh, very interesting to me. Um, I'm, I'm a very hands-on kind of guy. Um, but I, I usually, when I was younger, I would always say I'm a musician first, human second. And the reason is uh, there's many times when I've tried to put music aside and I, it, it just follows, it, it, it's like the more you throw it away, like the quicker it comes back, slaps you. Um, and uh, part of that had to, uh, it, it was sort of imposed on me. Uh, so I grew up in, in South America and in the 90s, when I was going to school, my parents were very supportive of me playing music, but it always came with a catch. You know, it's like, but wait, um, kind of thing. But in mine was like the other way around. It was like, yes, you want to play guitar? Here it is. But this is a hobby, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess, you know, because you're seven. And then you're 10. And I was like, oh, you want the electric guitar? Here it is. But this is a hobby, right? And I was like, um, yeah, what does that even mean? You know, <laughs> but by the time you're 14, 15, uh, graduating high school, uh, you get it. The idea is that, hey, if you're a musician for life, you're just going to starve to death. And so you need to pick a career. And so that's where uh, I had a huge conflict of interest with myself because definitely I wanted to be somebody. Um, but it was, I was told basically in a very soft way, what you want to do actually is not an option. So you have to find something else. So then I moved to the States and, um, I, I started my schooling starts in uh, industrial engineering, actually, which, uh, uh, I don't remember much of, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then I quickly realized what I really wanted to do if I was going to do any of these things was I wanted to do business. I wanted to, uh, find a way to to uh, allow elements and, and products to come to fruition. And so business was like, hey, this is actually something that I think I'm good at um, because I can talk to people and make things happen. So I have a great point on that, Justin, in that uh, these two worlds usually don't collide. Mm -hmm. um, and by the end of uh, my business degree, I realized there was a, a new thing coming up, which was music business. And I was like, this is perfect, right? It merges both things. And I took it and I finished it and I hated it. Because as a, as a performer, I hated being on the backstage and everybody was having fun in the stage. I was like, "That's I should be there, you know? Uh, <laughs> so uh, I sort of decided to just come back to the business world outside of music business mm -hmm. um, and uh, and do retail stuff. Well, I, I was in, in Miami at that point. So anything anything that is profitable is has got to do with... Uh, tourism you know so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or sales so i did that and that allowed me to really live what i wanted to do was to music mm -hmm. um and so i would gig here and there and have and uh, 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 many times i've had different sets of bands and whatnot but uh it was very much i'm just gonna do this because i'm good at uh, but it would be awesome if i could also do music mm -hmm. and uh well the the time that i've had here in gainesville it's it's i found many many ways through good people like augie you know it's uh it's been uh, somebody instrumental for me to do a lot of things that I want to do. You know, Jeff shoes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to steal it because it's too close to the past. Along. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh. um, so, yeah, uh, I, I think uh, in the same way that you want to see and work with people that, that uh, you think are alike, with like-minded mm -hmm. people, um, it's – awesome when you find people that, that that say and and feel the same way the other way around mm -hmm. right so um in, in in within chromatic uh there's still uh, a lot work a lot of work to be done uh mm -hmm. specifically i have been um th this this last few months we've been focusing a lot on the community mm -hmm. um and i uh, thoroughly enjoy that um and I didn't get to do uh, the, the first thing that I was telling you about to focus internally. Um, I think mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've, I've been able to know most of our employees like, really, really well. Uh, but there's so much more uh, that, they, that I want to do with them. But, you know, this whole situation happened and uh, now we're working remote. So it's, it's a little bit of a reset. Um, but we're making plans. We're taking steps so that once this is over, which uh, it, it's becoming to be a reality now. It's somewhere in the horizon now. Um, we can actually go full hand on that and just make well, it happen. You just threw a really interesting question out there, and uh, I'd love to know what you think. But I totally how it, do you, <laughs> you kind of engage your own internal community during COVID? Well, you know, there's many things that you can do. Uh, when you sprinkle a little fun on top of it, <laughs> it becomes a lot cooler to do for example for the holidays 
we decided to uh, go sing jingles, <laughs> and we did. If I had the video on me, I would uh, share it. But uh, <laughs> we uh, called HR, and HR was uh, kind enough to give us a list of everybody's directions. And so we showed up a morning at everybody's <laughs> door with uh, <laughs> with an accordion, a mini guitar, and mm -hmm. uh, I found uh, a tambourine that I can attach to my foot. And then we <laughs> sang Jingle Bells to everybody. <laughs> and then our significant others made uh, cookies that we could, you know, leave uh, as, a, uh, as a gift to, to the, because of, you know, they're, they're so important to us. They're, this is family to us. And um, I think at times, uh, even though it's a, a fun industry, mm -hmm. sometimes it's so demanding that we forget to also recognize the people around us, mm -hmm. right? So this for us was, this is going to be fun. We're going to have fun. They're going to get a laughter. But more importantly, hopefully, they also realize like, hey, this these guys actually care about us, you know, mm -hmm. um, because we're friends. And and for us, our what our uh, unit is a family. You know, we we are friends, but we are family on the things and on the planning that we do, because only then we actually are able to get uh, consistent and concise things together. Like uh, if if you think one thing. Or if you want to do something in a specific way, and I want to do it differently, it doesn't have to be yours or my way. It's like, how about let's talk about this? Let me hear mm -hmm. where your head's at, and then let's let's combine this. Let's let's make greatness together. So uh, that that's one way. For example, another one is, uh, for example, I'm meeting tomorrow with one of uh, uh, with one of our coworkers. Um, he, well, I forgot. He came after, and I I, I printed out some T-shirts. And then he came right like a couple of weeks after I had printed us some t-shirts, some special t-shirts uh, for the team that only the team can have. Because that was a way that we wanted to, hey, you guys are special, right? If we go to conventions, if you go out, you should wear this proud. Nobody else has this. But <laughs> this particular employee came a little bit after. And uh, we haven't actually done a batch of t-shirts since. <laughs> so uh, I forgot about it. So another employee told me last week, hey, man, so I was talking to with so-and-so and then you know, he never got a t-shirt. And, and I was like, Ooh, dee, dee, dee. and I was like, oh my God, that's so sad. So I need to fix that. Um, so mm -hmm. I called him up. We've done some uh, arrangements. So we are going to print him out a special t-shirt for him so that he can it be part of the team because he is. But it, it's funny. Little things mean a lot. And, uh, and it, they are easy to oversee, but they are very important in what they mean for them, right? Mm -hmm. Um because I would feel the same thing in return. You know, it's like, hey, I got laid to this party and now nobody wants to give me some of that punch. What's wrong here? You know, um, <laughs> so uh, th those are things are little things that uh, you can you can uh, you can do to, to help the team be together. Mm -hmm. Every change uh, you can you can take it both uh, two ways. Right. You can say, oh, my God, why did things change? Or you can look at it as an opportunity to do things better uh, and, and, and to enrich your community, your, your, your coworkers, your friend, and, and those who are uh, at, at your reach. Because truth is, some people that you may not consider a close friend, if they're on reach or in reach, they still are affected by the things that you do or not. So it is important to try to uh, not just plant seeds, but to come back and water them every now and then. It's interesting because you you're, you're you're serving a thing that I think is more important. More companies, a lot of people hire for it, but not a lot of people will like in, in, enforce it or use it a lot. Which is you have a job, which is the difference between wanting it and and having it. Which is <laughs> you seem to really enjoy solving for not just the people in your company, but solving for the community outside. And I think everybody that has a service that they're giving to the public needs to have someone like you ah. because it's important. It's super important <laughs> yeah. because, like you said, the people are creating it have to be excited and the people who are receiving it have to be excited and <laughs> if there's not someone who's always constantly like you know let me listen to both sides of it you know it causes a lot of problems and i know a lot of companies hire for that but i don't think a lot of companies really go you are important to what we're doing here so, yeah, yeah no i mean and that's a that's a great point uh yeah. sometimes you put more effort as, as a company it's like oh yeah but how many engineers do we have right mm -hmm. and and how many more do we need because you can always have more engineers and let's <laughs> yeah. uh, be honest it's a, super important uh but then if you just go one layer deeper in that, it's like, okay, if we have the, the right number of engineers, are they all happy? You know, Are they happy doing what they do? Are they happy 
amongst themselves? Are they happy with what you do for them, right? So uh, simple questions, but if you don't have an answer, if you don't have a solid, yes, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're happy, uh, then most likely they're not, right? Uh, what have you done with them? That uh, I, I, I do remember that when we came first to the studio, a lot of people don't even knew anything about the guy down the street, um, that and by the street, I mean the end of the hallway, um, <laughs> that uh, even though they had worked together for some time, but it was a very easy thing to i wouldn't even say fix just to address um mm -hmm. we're all human you know it, we have it in us to have these bonds it's just that some sometimes for some people it's a little bit harder to, to do that initial movement you know it's mm -hmm. it's that movement when you put the coal in the train and you're like but there's 200 wagons like how's <laughs> it gonna move but mm -hmm. it will move you, somebody just have to put enough coal and it will do that movement and once it's going inertia will take over mm -hmm. um I think, uh, and this is not just me, I think uh, we came, we injected a little bit of uh, happiness and that it is okay to say, uh, to fail, and it is okay to maybe do the wrong thing as long as you bring it up and then we all work together into solving things. Um, and everybody's really jumped on that wagon and, and we're pushing forward and, and we're, we're going against all odds um, mm -hmm. because we're a small team. And the things that we are achieving and and continue to uh, to put on our on our planning are somewhat big, uh, but we're confident that we can do it. Uh, and the more that we do it, the easier it is. is is like greasing the machine. We 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 just allowing it to keep on happening. So, mm -hmm. and I see, uh, you know, it's kind of a I, I like to do these kind of correlations, but I do yeah. see a correlation in your job of with even sound and people, which is little things that if they're not there yeah will get noticed you know sound when there's not a sound there everybody goes that's just that's weird and little things with your community if there's something missing there they'll notice right away so it's like you are just doing the same things in two completely different fields and i think it's fantastic oh uh, thanks thanks and and something else uh, again like the, the merging points are, are really cool something else that we figured out uh i i kind of started helping uh the previous sound designer and he is an amazing uh mine a great musician uh but because because I, I have a little more of a people person uh, approach to things, uh, we were able to mesh audio and the studio in, 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 in a few layers deeper. For example, the new apprentice is actually, uh, uh, well, actually, the new apprentice is me. I forgot. Uh, sorry. <laughs> the new apprentice is me uh, because I needed to pick one hero that I could uh, try to set a bar with. Um, and since I'm very loud, uh, I usually come and do the, the, the recordings at night. Uh, but once it was done, I was like, okay, I have three more heroes, our, our initial four heroes that we wanted to ship with. Um, I came to uh, a crossroads. I can do them. I'm, uh, it's, it's very easy for me to just do multiple voices. If, if we ever hang out for more than an hour, you'll know that I'm, I, can, <laughs> I can do uh, a lot of sounds and do not stop singing. But... That is not what I wanted. That's uh, thankfully I had that other capacity on me. That I was like, hey, I want everybody to be part of the of of the team, not just on the creating of it, but on the audio realm, right? So uh, I reached out to some you know key people in in the team that I thought would appreciate the calling, and I said, hey, would you like to be uh, the squire, and uh, or would you like to be the huntress, right? Um, and uh, everybody was like, hell yeah. Like I want to do that, and and so we did, and so I thought that was great because instead of instead of hiring a, a voiceover actor or actress, instead of me doing all the sounds by myself, this was a, a beautiful platform to get everybody on 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 another layer within the game. You just didn't do the bricks in the in the floor. You just didn't do the animation. Somebody just did not they, they just didn't do uh the vfx you are now part of the game you know and it and it's uh i think for a couple months it's surreal you know like to watch people play uh uh on on twitch and then every time here you know something like hey! like that it's us you know it's <laughs> us in there and I, that was like really really fun um i think they also feel that when they say hey you should play the game uh, by the way, I am the, the you know uh, fill in the blank hero, and mm -hmm. I thought that was um, that was a great way to get them part of the team. 
uh, we have a lot more content planned for the years and years to come. And I already have an internal list of who I want to be some of those heroes, just because I can see the personality matching what we want to do. Um, but I always get surprised. There's somebody, somebody that, you know, like you think, oh, this person's really shy. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Can I? Have you ever seen uh, American Idol? With then like this little little person yeah. is like, yeah, I can't even talk. It. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and that's uh, it, it happens every now and then and it's cool when that happens yeah it's a yeah, I'll tell you that, it's awesome. a dream that'd be a dream come true for me something I've, I've always wanted to do that and i've always uh -huh. joked that, like I, I would love to voice in video games always voicing and something i wanted to do but i've always wanted to be like you know in madden when there's that coach in the background i was like let's go it's like <laughs> yeah. i just want to be that voice i'm just like when someone plays like that voice when the guy going that's go that's me <laughs> you know <laughs> well next time you're in game and in, uh, in gainesville then like, you're gonna have to bring a, a oh, white sure, towel yeah. you're gonna have yeah. to get a towel like, god you can't do it you can't do it <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I, I think one of the cool things for me is just hearing you talk. And I mean, a lot of times people get really bogged down on analytics because at the end of the day, analytics is what proves ROI. Yeah. You know, and businesses are businesses. Uh -huh. They need to prove ROI. They need to be able to justify why they spend on something. Yes. Totally. And it's nice hearing that you guys are cognizant of the fact that some of this stuff is harder to track, but it still mm -hmm. needs to get done. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it goes yeah. a long way. And I've seen... I've seen other studios do this right for a while and it's always very difficult to keep it going. So I'm hoping, you know, <laughs> that that can be something that you guys could stick with. Cause I know um, even just pre COVID times uh, before when you guys launched uh, on steam, I think Augie made everybody like pancakes that morning yes, or an did. omelet or something. I Cause did. I actually <laughs> used that image on a presentation I gave at UCF and FIA just because I had to have something oh, for awesome. like a, a CEO or something. And I'm like, <laughs> to me, it, it just says a lot about someone when they're yeah. willing to serve because it's one of those things where it's like, everybody's aware that that person in that role has mm -hmm. a lot on their plate, yeah. you know? So when they take a step back and say, yeah, I, I have a lot on my plate. That's super, super important, but mm -hmm. this is super important too. Yeah. You know, that, that to me has always said a lot. Um, having a CEO that not only shows by example, but also empowers you by, mm -hmm. by just by you looking at uh, what they do. Like, oh, you purposely, uh, built his desk in the middle of the studio so mm -hmm. that everybody was literally, uh, all you had to do was like push yourself and roll on your chair and, and you, you will end up at Augie so you can ask whatever you need to, um, or come check on what I'm working on. Um, you brought a, a great one. He literally said, Hey. I want to do pancakes for them. What do you think? <laughs> and you would think it's like, okay, like it's a pancake day, but it wasn't. It was just like any other day. He just decided he wanted to do something nice for the employees, and he took it all out. He ordered his like his whole <laughs> his yeah, whole, I saw uh, uh, chef outfit uh, to Chef Ogie. Uh, you know, everybody would come in the morning, and he would ask, "Hey, what do you want in your pancake?" And people were like, "Wait, what?" Um, <laughs> actually, it wasn't pancakes. It was omelets. It was omelets, yeah. yeah. Was, That's what I mean. Uh, I couldn't remember because they look so similar. <laughs> now that I'm thinking of the options, so I was like, wait, yeah, peppers and pancakes don't don't mix together. <laughs> but uh, you know, everybody came and, uh, and 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 worked nicely. And for the remaining of the day, you just look to the side of you and you have this empty plate of what you ate that was delicious, but it's the reminder of man, somebody actually appreciates me and they went into the, a mode that maybe no, not most CEOs would go, which is, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cook something for you, you know? Um, and, and those things are awesome. Again, like the idea of uh, visiting people at, at their homes uh, and and I wanted to film it on and they was like, yeah, no, I don't want to show what people leave. So uh, <laughs> I don't live. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I, I would have had, been like, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally said, I was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool? Yeah, no, I would not. Um, but no. <laughs> But it was good that we we actually had those experiences, right? At the end of the day, what you take is is, is what you experience, not so much what what you can show on the uh, on the fake book. But uh, it was fun. It was fun. It's a lot of fun. It seems like you guys are tapping into the thing, which a lot I assume a lot of games do have this problem: is the difference between making people want to work hard and yeah. forcing them to work hard. You know, <laughs> and if people want to work hard, they're going to do it and probably give you ten times better results. And right. All it takes is just a little bit of appreciation those little things it's, i think it's great yeah well definitely. and within gaming itself i feel like there's not that many people who intentionally choose gaming because mm -hmm. they don't like it 
Yeah. You know, it's true. Yeah. Because like, let's, let's just be honest in general, mm-hmm. if you work in video games, you could probably go work in Milsim and make like 40% more, True. Yeah. you know, at True. least. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, you're clearly making a cognizant decision <laughs> to say, I love this. Jesus, I'm passionate I about yeah. this. And I've never met anyone alive who wants to put out a product that they don't want to stand behind. You right. Know? Cause at the end of the day, like, you don't want to put out something bad, you know, like you yep. want it to be the best dang game ever, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And I think in games, uh, like you said, nobody's in, in, in the industry of games just cause it's like, oh, I'm like, okay, my mom told me, you know, it's like, you love it. So we go to work loving it, but sometimes it's easy to, uh, just think or, or to get stressed out when there's a deadline to meet or something. So just having little, uh, uh, things that show appreciation to one another. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this is not just like, okay, this is your birthday or this is okay. President's day. Here's link on. No, this is like every now, every, every, uh, every now and then every option that you have to do something uh, for the team. We were also, um, I talked to Augie. Augie was like really nice to give me a budget and we would go once a week. I'm sorry. Once a month, I would take about 20 to 25 people on lunch. Um, Mm-hmm. Just so that we could, uh, we call it the chromosomes. And that was uh, very, uh, I was very proud of that one, even though it didn't come out for me. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, chromatic chromosomes. Mm-hmm. And so um, we wanted, a, a lot of people had come from different places and we wanted to integrate not just to our community, but to the, the, the local community. And what better way to do that than through food, right? So mm-hmm. I would take them to cool joints that are a little bit off the beaten path. Um, which in Gainesville standards are is like six minutes away. You know, <laughs> I was gonna five say five minutes away, but uh, if you're gonna go to the far off land, uh, then you need six minutes at least. Mm-hmm. You need to budget. Um, and yeah, we would have like really cool chats about what they did, about their families, spouses, partners, whatever it was, where they living, or or they discovered a new park in town and whatnot. So uh, just to get them out for an hour and a half, uh, get them out of their working mindset even though they're doing games there's nothing to complain but um just to get them something of a break uh was good and Mm -hmm. that also allowed uh for a lot of them to really mesh with each other um in in the weeks to come it it allowed it gave them a safe place um to to be themselves that they just didn't they they just needed to they didn't need to be in a cubicle hiding um or trying to you know hey what's your name kind of thing um we could all go somewhere and just have normal human chats i think that's definitely something that's difficult when it comes to scaling a company oh yeah because when you're four or five people everybody mm-hmm. knows everything about everybody <laughs> you know right. when you start to get to maybe let's say 15 20 you know everyone's name, but yeah. you may not know everything about them. <laughs> yes. And when you start getting closer to that 50 person range, yeah. there's probably at least two people that you don't know, you know, or at least you don't know well at all, you know, right, and it's right. just like, what do you do that? <laughs> yeah. I think there's, a, oh no, I think John froze. Um, I, 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 thought think, he, I thought he was out a lot. I thought words. he was really in thought. Yeah, <laughs> but I think he froze. No, it's something you had touched on though that I think is important that a lot of, except a lot of companies fail at this, which is the time to show the appreciation is not during the crunch time. It's, yeah. It's during the, it's, it's appreciations up to the point. So when crunch time happens, they're ready to go. It's not like, oh, we need you to work harder. Okay, now's the day we're going to buy you food. And it's like, what? Well, no, where's the whole rest of the year where we you know you should just let us know that we're doing a good job. Right. So and we would... want to do a better job. <laughs> and I would tell you that food does not never, it, it never tastes good. Cause yeah. you have to like, it's like, okay, finish it quickly so you can get back to work. Uh, that, that's a great point. That's a great way to put it. Um, and uh, you, you want to create relationships relationships before uh, things go wrong you know you want to do that when when it it, on the downtime or where things are great so you make them even stronger so when there's any rocky times that you know uh there there always seem to be something that needs to be worked on last minute everybody's like ready to have your back um, and and say hey here's my shoulder because you always give me yours so let's do this together you know and you're not you know what you're not even asking people to work harder at that point you're just like yeah that's true this is the deadline like you know we just got to get this thing done Mm -hmm. if you've done your job of Mm -hmm. making them feel appreciated they're going to be like all right let's get let's get this thing done then you know it's not you know you're getting to that final final push and you're like you guys need to work harder because we're behind it's like that's the worst thing you can do the pressure shouldn't be on them if you You've done your job you know right so, uh yeah. it, it gets to the point where 
um, there's times that we've had like very tight deadlines to, to do things. And um, uh, we have become such a solid team that the directors don't don't have to say, okay, well, so-and-so and so-and-so, like you guys have to come on the week. It, it's more like, look, we have this much doing it, you know, mathematically speaking, um, if you, uh, on the days that we have left, they're just not going to work. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we, how about, uh, anyone willing to come like maybe on a Saturday or stay a little bit longer on Friday? Uh, uh, if somebody wants to do it, we're just going to put a, a digital list. And, uh, if, if you want to come, please just put your name just so that we know how to set up the place. And of course we're going to get some food so you guys can stay here. Um, and most everybody stays, yeah, and, and it's cool. We don't have to tell anybody. It's like, oh, you know, I was like, oh, I gotta do this again. Uh, which I hear that it's very often uh, a thing from 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 studios, like you mentioned, like bigger studios have the tendency to not be as personal uh, amongst one another. And I see that. I see the reasoning. It's just a lot of people. But I'll tell you what, it is doable. It is possible. You just want. You have to want to do it, and you have to start somewhere. And that somewhere needs to happen today. If you're always <laughs> waiting for it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll get to that, you know, next month or after Christmas. It's kind of like the diet cheat, right? And I was like, yeah. okay, I'm going to lose 80 pounds in two days, but yeah. starts next Monday. And then that Monday never comes. So you just have to go for it. Um, and the bigger the studio, uh, the, the, the sooner you should get started. And uh, the other thing is, it shouldn't be a one-person role. This should be contagion, mm-hmm. uh, contagious. Um, happy for me, it's uh, that most everybody that I chat with, um, I should have sold cars or something, but uh, it, 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 it can be really <laughs> contagious. you know. So uh, if you bring a good, a, a good face and, and a good persona, and more importantly, an honest image of, hey, we actually can do this if we all put ourselves into it, um, they turned around and say the same thing in return. So yep. you multiply mm-hmm. yourself, right? Yep. Um, and that's what what better way to work than to work with people that just want to do the same things uh, that you are doing so that you can achieve the greatest of things. Because nobody could have built um, anything that is of, of relevance alone, right? Even the most brilliant minds need, need some people to, uh, to mm-hmm. help them execute. So... Yep. Um, delegation is important and we have great directors that are always on that. And on my end, it's more like, yep, I'm just going to make sure that everybody's happy so that when they have to do it, they do it with a smile on their faces. And then, you know, it, it, it just happens. Yeah. So there's a saying somewhere, I don't know what it's like, bad leaders demand, great leaders inspire. And you just, uh-huh. you're pretty much just hitting it right on the, on the head. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah you know. We have a good thing going on. And that the blue screen of death is actually a really nice segue (laughs) because the nice thing is I'm not even flustered by stuff like that anymore because I did Twitch streaming for so long. You know, like you really get used to the fact that a you can do everything perfect and it won't work out perfectly. Yeah, because there's Mm -hmm. stuff that you can't control. Mm -hmm. You know, B, you just get used to kind of talking, going with the flow. Um, but just kind of to harken back to a point you talked about earlier where your parents were like, okay, here's a guitar, but this is a hobby. Right. You know, I think that was actually really good (laughs) advice in a lot of ways that (laughs) a lot of people don't get because you learned a, I can keep this as something I love. And I think, especially with our generation, there's this over like goal of turning everything into a side hustle where it's like, okay, I got to make money on my hobbies. <laughs> yeah, you know, the problem true. there is you no longer necessarily love your hobbies anymore. Enjoy you know, it. they yeah. suddenly become these things that like, you're not doing them because you just love to do it. You're doing it because you get a little bit of a paycheck or something. Mm-hmm. You know, back when I was streaming, there was a point where I hit where I'm like, I don't want to play games anymore. I would just start cooking for fun, you know, cause I'm like, yeah. I need something. <laughs> like my old de-stress hobby is no longer a de-stress hobby. It's now a, a stressful activity for oh, me, yeah. you know? And that's when I realized personally, okay, I'm not cut out for content creation long-term. I'm going to go, <laughs> you know, back to what I actually am cut out for and kind of move that direction and help creators, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, in a way, uh, uh, my thing is being the opposite. It's like, oh, could it, it couldn't be the 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 money making situation. That's like, okay, now I can do it. Great, let's uh, mm-hmm. open the floodgates. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, and it happens also with uh, with work. Uh, as a musician, I hate doing music with a mouse and a keyboard. I hate it. It's like not inviting, you know. So mm-hmm. um, after. 
doing uh, business emails and personal stuff on, on, on the computer like, all day. And then at night, you want to just vent, musically speaking, just grab a guitar and do something. And all of a sudden, uh, it's really easy to find this software uh, DAW situation, which is like on the computer, recording everything. Mm-hmm. I Since day one, I never liked that. I started doing it, uh, and I've kept myself to a point that I know how to operate it. And I, you know, for certain things, I have to use it. It's the way to go. I don't have a, you know, Abbey Roads um, nearby, but Mm -hmm. nor the budget (laughs) to uh, (laughs) to save it. Let's start with that. Not the budget. Uh, um, But there's a, there's a lot of options that you can, uh, for me, particularly, they tend to cost a little more to get a hardware uh, feeling thing, but it feels like an instrument. It makes me feel like I'm playing music. You know, whether mm-hmm. I am moving faders or I'm moving knobs and and or hitting a physical record button, it gives me a different feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and that pays off. So whatever whatever it is that you do, if you find a workflow that works best for you, not what you read on the net on the top ten magazines, you have to have the software and you have to have this piece of equipment. This is the best mic. Um, it's got to be something that is personal to you. Um, and also you got to be ready to fail because you're going to try 10 things and only by the ninth one, you're really going to know what you need or what you mm-hmm. want. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I went to Lutheri school um, many, many moons ago, 2014. Um, Justin Lutheri school, you know what that is? I don't actually. Yeah. So uh, you go to the moon, right? And when you're in the moon, there's got to be somebody that plants the potatoes. No, that is not what it is. <laughs> Lutheri is, uh, it's kind of like a forgotten art. Of, uh, I was like, did we just get back to GameStop? I was yeah. really confused. I'm like, to the moon. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's the art of making instruments. Oh, okay. And at some point, I had I downsized my guitar collection. But at some point, I had like 16 guitars. And taking them to Guitar Center to be set up was like 70 bucks each. Um, and you have to do it a few times a year, especially in a place uh, like Florida. It's very humid. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is a lot of money. I just want to learn how to do it myself. And I'm very hands-on i love tinkering with things i could not get it right so i flew to michigan got it done uh stood there I, I spent an awesome time and then uh there's this company called stuart mcdonald uh they sell all the tools for luthery and to do one job you have no joke 20 different tools and of course uh because i got to use some at the shop uh, on the school it was like i was like okay this is great but i wish there was a little something different or it's cumbersome and then you go into their site it's like oh look at this one this one has you know <laughs> and i didn't stop that you, you end up spending like 500 dollars in four files um <laughs> until you get like i really like this file you know but now you spent <laughs> you went through like all the different tools um and it is like that for most things you have to buy you have to find the tools that are that are good for you that you enjoy uh, that help you enjoy your work right mm-hmm. if you if you don't enjoy what you do then don't do it no, you're not mm-hmm. obligated to do anything. Um, and uh, it, it, it could be any industry. You know, it could be it could be that you do games or it could be that you do insurance or that you sell car insurance. It really doesn't matter. As long as you're finding the way something that makes uh, that makes that gig enjoyable to you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, well, I, I think that's like the key, especially when it comes to something like streaming, which mm-hmm. to me. Um, I always reference almost kind of like the old rock star, like everybody wants to have a band, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of people with garage bands in the nineties, you know, there's a lot of people streaming now, you know, and the yeah, reality yeah. is um, most people are going to do it for fun. You know, there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. If yeah. you enjoy it, you enjoy it. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with being successful as a nickel band cover artist. If you enjoy it, you know, Never made it as a wise man. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, but, you know, like for most people, they're probably not going to break into that like super celeb territory, you know, and that's OK. Yeah. You know, and there's ways to kind of find a good balance between I want to do this as a career, but also having some fallback options and, you know, people who just want to do it as a hobby, you know, uh-huh. well, and then there's. Like- Go for it, Justin. I was, saying, it was just the thing is that lo- you, even though we're saying the fun thing of love, loving it is not enough. Like you still mm-hmm. have to become bet the the best you can be at it mm-hmm. to, to get to that next level. But it, you know, if you just want to do it for fun, then you know, loving it is all you need. But if you want yeah. to, you have to do more than just love it. So. Yeah, like, I've met great musicians uh, throughout the years, and you're like, man, you're better than you know, Lady Gugu. But <laughs> you are you working towards it, right? Yeah. Um, 
and do you are you working or are you not working towards it because you don't want to or because you don't know how to start right yeah uh, there's two things there's people tell you yeah i just i just like to do this on my weekends and it's like that's awesome you know so you are in the perfect place and you're doing what you love right mm -hmm. um but but yeah it's uh like like us we don't stream because honestly we like it we're uh both just stupid guys being stupid and <laughs> we like it yeah. but i know that uh there's people that have the most amazing setups uh, I, and I'm like, damn, Ali, we should do that. But it takes so much time. And then I see that their content is not always the greatest. They've just been there mm -hmm. for a long time. So I think we're okay uh, having a very simple simple and humble kind of approach to the to, to the actual mechanics of, of doing it. As long as we can be fun in the content. Because that's really all we want to do. We just want to spread a little bit of, uh, of happiness and joy. Uh, well, and yeah. that's even kind of why we do this podcast. It's just because we want to have cool conversations yeah. with people I know. <laughs> yeah, and I want to be able to kind of highlight different people and give them a voice to kind of share what inspires them and yeah, what knowledge man. they have with other people. You know, yeah. And that's what's super fun to me is I get to just sit here and learn and listen a lot every week. Yeah. You know, it's one hour out of the week where I don't have to turn on my <laughs> lawyer hat and be like, "All right, what do I need to kind of say to?" you know, like yeah. this, but I could just kind of sit back and listen and just genuinely be engaged. Yep. Um, there's actually a really cool question that just came through in chat and I'm going to oh, just yeah. kind of repeat it. So what would you say about chromatic games thriving in a small town like Gainesville and what kind of hope for those of us in the middle of nowhere in Florida? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of middle of nowheres here in Florida. Um, you, <laughs> yeah. you, don't, you don't have to go far. Um, and I, uh, it, it's funny if you go an hour and a half one way, you end up in Jacksonville. If you do the same thing the other way, you end up in Cedar Key, uh, water both sides. And in between those, there's like Citra and Alachua and all these like little little towns. Um, um, now, in, in this setup for us, uh, first of all, pre-COVID, this is an oasis. We love this place. Uh, mm -hmm. I really get down from the elevator and uh, walk five, was used to walk five blocks to to the office. And then we could go a block in any direction and have food. And then you kind of get to know all the places. And in those five blocks, I probably high five and hug and, and, and say hello to at least 20 people every time uh, because it's a small town. Um, yeah. Uh, the, also on, on the flip side, I will say, don't be a natural because you are going to run into everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in those five blocks. So, uh, just, uh, in, uh, just a heads up. Um, no, so I, th I, I think one of the things that a lot of people forget about like Florida in general is it's uh -huh. actually really underrated when it comes to games, just with the fact that we have so much talent at a university yeah. level, like yeah. you guys are right next to UF. And that's the that is that huge say. because uh, you get some yeah, yeah, really out, good students outside the university itself. Uh, there's so many studios here. Like mm -hmm. you have, uh, well, some of the studios have uh, rebranded um, outside of us. Um, there's like porting studios here. There's like uh, huge studios. Like you wouldn't think. Like you know, Arc is made here mm -hmm. in the backyard. Um, you're like, what? Games in Florida? Yep. You know, it's. Uh, I think yeah. everything that we really would want to have would be a bigger airport <laughs> so <that laughs> we could fly in and out from here but at the same time i don't know and they already uh talking about expanding it i don't know if that would mean that um it, this city would grow a lot and maybe mm -hmm. that would rub from what's good about it i don't know um but there's uh florida has this beauty or at least gainesville has this beauty where it can expand in every direction we don't have mountains so it literally just can grow in every direction and just uh, we have a lot of space uh, for well for for development. And, and the nice thing is, you're not that far from somewhere like Orlando, which exactly. is a bigger hub that people yeah. flying in out of all the time. You I know? will say this to answer to that comment concisely: If you want to be part of a studio and you're somewhere in Florida, we're always looking for talent. Mm -hmm. um, in in any capacity, there's always something that uh, we. First of all, we, we love connecting with people. Right. So uh, if you come give us a visit, we'll, we'll go around and uh, we'll show you the town. We'll have fun. And and if there's something that you can bring to our our, our studio, we're more than happy to welcome you. Um, if you live in Georgia, no, no. If you live <laughs> anywhere else, it's the same thing. Right. You don't have to be in Florida um, just to, uh, to be part of our team. We actually, you know, now uh, I think 
with this whole situation, a lot of people are opening their idea of like, okay, well, I guess we could work remote and we are sort of taking it the other way around. Yes, it works, right? But it, it works mm -hmm. with deficiencies and yeah. it doesn't work in the same way that we were used to work. And this has created for us a few delays here and there, a few problems of, oh, can we schedule a talk? And instead of being like, hey, can we chat? To like, uh, okay, let me check my agenda. And, you know, like maybe mm -hmm. somebody has like their significant other in the other room and they, they, are, they are also taking a call. So this has actually strengthened our ideology that we all need to be under one roof. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, this is cheap. So if you want to come, by all means. <laughs> well, in Florida in general, the cost of living here, yeah. not that bad. And no yeah. state income tax. Oh, yeah. No. It's a, it's a pretty easy tax. pitch for me whenever I have to make it to people. It is true. I could not afford all these puppies. With that. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a big thing with businesses too that I would assume that you have to not focus on what you don't have, but yeah. really kind of. And I think a lot of businesses, when things get bad, mm -hmm. only go, "Okay, we don't have this anymore. We don't have this anymore." And they start to kind of crumble. Yeah. Where the good ones always take stock of what they now have access to and learn how to get creative with that. Now, it's not easy. Obviously, it's not like yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. click a switch and thing. But I do think a lot of people, as soon as they start losing, are thinking that they're on an, on an island. They don't really go maybe a mile in the water. There's something I could use. Like they don't really take stock of what they could actually use around them. So, yeah. And, and, and you know, wearing many hats is something that uh, we really appreciate oh, yeah. people that, you know, not only know many things or have many skill sets, but that have the willingness to, uh, to learn other things. You know, yeah. um, the fact that I do uh, the sound, the sound, uh, the sound design, it is something that because sound design is not needed every day, uh, of a year, uh, that allows me to, to, to tap into this engagement role, uh, very frequently. Actually, mm -hmm. usually the audio thing is more like, uh, is there something today? It's like, no, maybe tomorrow. And then, you know, I feel like I'm knocking, selling some sort of like the pursuit of happiness guys. Like, hey, we have the newest like scanner of, of earlobes. Yeah. Uh, it's like, nah, maybe tomorrow. Um, but then it's like, okay, we need you and you need to do nothing else. And you're like, okay, you know, but, um, uh, it, it allows me to uh, to 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 do different things and and wear uh, multiple hats around the uh, around the uh, around the company. So yeah, no, that's great. that's awesome. And uh, just wrap things up shortly. Mm -hmm. um, oh my are, God. are you willing no. to do an outro for us? Do you yeah, get to hear I, it on the guitar? <laughs> I, so it's funny. Before we started, I was doing. Uh, uh, I was remembering that one of the beauty. One of the beautiful things about being a creator and creating music is not so much to uh, to play it, but there is, uh, I think it was point number four on that book in 2001 that I read, um, that as a, uh, as a songwriter, you one of the five rights that you have is to create uh, different versions of what you do. Right? <laughs> and I've always loved that. So, you know the rocking song that it is, mara, mara, mara. Um, how about we do a little different uh, version of that? Or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I was just like, come on in, Traveler. Grab a couple of them. <laughs> Listen to Manuel say. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, I'm going to put a fedora and then a striped t shirt, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it all in French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> All right. No, that was awesome. It's been awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I feel Thank important you, now. For the rest of the day, I want to feel like the president. And uh, hey, if uh, if any Thursdays you're doing nothing at five o'clock, you can come join us at Dev Juice. We have some some uh, Dev Juice, of course. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Good to see you too, Augie. See you guys. Later. <laughs>